Hello everyone, Wanjo here and welcome to Total War Three Kingdoms. Now the game has finally been released and from what I can tell it has been ex widely accepted by the Total War community with many praises from all the counts. Now I'm looking forward to finding out how good the game is for myself as we start a new campaign today. Now before I actually get started I just want to give a bit of a disclaimer aka a trigger warning for some people no doubt and that I am probably going to be butchering the names of people and places doing this playthrough. So just be patient and if it really does bother you then let me know in the comments phonetically if possible how I'm supposed to say the name of the person or the place and I shall try my best to do so for the later episodes. But with that disclaimer now said Let's get started with a new campaign. Now I haven't had the chance to actually check out anything with the game itself, although I do know little bits and pieces here and there from watching it on YouTube, especially from the Total War channel. So let's get into this and let's enjoy the campaign guys and girls. So as you can guess from the little intro that we've got at the beginning of this video, as well as the title of the series itself, our winning warlord for the warlord vote happens to be one of the outlaws. So if we pop onto here, it is actually the bandit queen herself, Zheng Zhang. Now her starting situation is very hard, so let's click on her and Empires see. Oh. Are built on blood, not honor. Dynasties and nobility mean nothing to Zheng Jiang. She prefers to seize glory in her own way. Okay, am I going to interrupt anyone now? No? Okay, let's roll with it. <laughs> that was embarrassing. So, here is the starting screen for Zheng Zhang. And it looks like I'm already butchering her name already, but it rolls off the tongue better for me. So I'm going to try, and while I will try to say it, I'll probably be saying how I'm saying it. But anyway, she has a very start heart, starting position. As you can see, she starts up in the north, which I believe is called the Black Mountains. So, we're going to have a little bit of a problem getting around the map, I imagine. I mean, that's what it was said about in the Total War video for her. So yes, I have been doing my homework. And as you can see, she's also a champion. So very good against enemy generals, which is good because we're going to be playing with a romance option. So we're going to be having characters dueling one another and larger than life heroes rather than, you know, people with bodyguards. Now, her bonuses as well is that she gets a minus one to muster in turns and 50% tribute in diplomacy. Meaning that we're going to be able to recruit armies a little bit faster I guess and we're going to get more tribute when we start engaging in that sort of thing. Now the unique faction resource is infamy which looks like it will increase our prestige which is required to achieve higher faction ranks. Okay. Increases a counter experience. Satisfaction and morale. Now satisfaction I know is basically your character's happiness with your faction. If it's low, they could defect to other factions. We'll try to avoid that. And apparently it will decrease each turn. So we're going to have to try and play, it seems, quite aggressively. A bit different from my usual play style, but we'll make it work. Now, unique features. We've got two units, hidden axes. Okay, apparently these guys are going to charge in, but not so much against cavalry. Okay. Fists of the Bandit Queen. Seem like they're a better version of these guys, basically. Okay. Agriculture building chain bandit layer. Increases my replenishment but reduces income. Okay. Tribute hall gives me extra income from tributaries. Right. And we've got two low 12 worthy characters. We've got Lu Zhen, a rogue. And Quan 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 I, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Oh, him, anyway. So, that is our noteworthy characters. We'll check them out once we start the campaign. Ember's and let's watch Stark the intro clip. Against the, night. the tyrant Dong Zhuo wields the flames of destruction. Luo Yang burns. Chaos ignites as the power of the Unix is crushed. In the pyre, the hand falters. Let emperors die. Let dynasties fall. Zheng Jiang will rise like the mighty cypress tree. All of China is for the taking. She will claim it. China is in turmoil. 
The great empire of the Han, stretching back ages beyond counting, is being devoured by corruption. The yellow turbans, thousands strong, began raising their banners in rebellion and seizing commanderies across the realm. In response, generals loyal to the emperor rose up and put down the rebellion. Okay. Yet, despite oh. <laughs> the victory, the chaos only grew. With the corruption at the very heart of the empire, the loyal generals stormed the imperial palace and killed the ten eunuchs, the source of China's ills. In the madness, the warlord Dong Zhuo seized the emperor. With the great warrior Lur Bu at his side, none dared oppose him. In response to Dong Zhuo's brazen display, treason some call it, a coalition of warlords rose up, led by the charismatic Yuran Shao, to save the Han. Faced with united opposition, Dong Zhuo retreated west to his stronghold of Chang'an, raising the old capital Luoyang to the ground as he fled. It is now the year 190 CE, and the coalition has all but collapsed. Warlords on all sides have seen opportunities to build their own fortunes from the chaos. Yellow turban remnants still stalk the lands, seeking the age of the yellow sky, whilst soldiers of fortune feel the change of fate on the wind and strike out on their own. The scales shift, and China hangs in the balance. Okay, I believe that's everything. Yeah, it looks like it. Now I have to say, I do appreciate this little sort of backstory to the events, leap, the current events in the game. Like I said in the Warlord Vote video, I am no expert with this era of history. And that's why I let you guys pick which Warlord I was going to play as. Now, the fact that it's very hard difficulty to start, maybe is a different issue, but I quite like the fact that it does lead to a bit of the background to the current events. So for someone like myself, it's really appreciated to know, okay, this is what happened leading up to this fight of the three kingdoms, essentially. So with this now said, let's hit continue. And what's this now? Oh, right, little intro video again. The Imperial capital lies in ruins, reduced to cinders. Those noble fools tear each other to pieces. This is long overdue. Just so. Dong Zhuo steals away with the Emperor to the west. He will be wanted by all of China now. There will be infamy in helping destroy him. Yet it may be more fun to watch them fight. The yellow turbans rise up in every province, seeking retribution and freedom. The old ways are dead. The Han is collapsing. The people revolt, and the once mighty noblemen are powerless to stop it. The time to strike is now. China is vulnerable. Whilst those pompous dogs squabble for the throne, there is fame and wealth to be found amongst the fires. Change is on the wind, Zheng Jiang. Seize the moment. Seize glory. Okay, there we have it. So, first objective, chapter, I guess you could say, is establish your power. Zheng Zhang, the land is being consumed by chaos, but it is in chaos that you thrive. None in this world have accepted you and none have welcomed you, so you must make your own world, one where you rule. Alliances may be of temporary use, there, they, ugh. yet there are very few warlords that you should trust. Any who oppose you in your quest for your glory should be destroyed, or will bow to the bandit queen. So it looks like we need to make our way past the hand forces and build a, find a power base to build up our strength. Okay, doable I guess. Mission issued. The bandit queen revels in destruction and war. Changes in the air. The smell of a rotten dynasty pervades the land. Imperial forces are ripe for defeat. Strike out and crush them. 
The Han is dying and you must hasten the end. So we need to engage the following general's army in battle. Zen Yu. Zen Yu. And you're right in front of us. Okay, not too bad. Okay, what do we get? Taste of victory. Plus three military supplies. Okay. So they still got the supply mechanics from Thrones of Britannia, basically, where you need to make sure your counters have got, your armies have got food. Otherwise, they're going to just desert. And also, we need to get plus five morale for three turns. Okay. That works. Let's check you Impossible. out. Really? You have two archer units? Two archer units and their general. A strategist. Okay. Mountains are to be conquered like all else. Of course, Zhen Zhang. Okay, so that's their army. And this is our army. Never yield. So we've got Zhen Zhang herself, our champion, the Bandit Queen. We've got a unit of hidden axes, Xi Militia, Archer Militia. We've got Kuang Kui, the Sentinel Lookout chap. Axe Warbands. Okay, let me just double check I you. you welcome, what do Sentinels Lord. do again? Excel locking down enemy generals or holding a choke point for a long period of time. Okay, they tend to be quite good with heavy armor and that. Gotcha. Okay. The UK Axe Warband. Two out units of... Christ, this is going to be an easy fight. Ending, we are reminded of, new starts. of course. Right, let's fight this battle. And because it is the very first battle, I'll fight it. I mean, I'll be absolutely shocked if I lose it, but we'll fight it. Warlords, nobles, emperors, who cares? The only constants are glory, recognition, and wealth. Titles are nothing. Fame is forever. There are no lengths I will not go to to achieve my ambition. The bodies will pile high. China will burn. But I will be remembered. Wow. Well... You know what they say, if you have to choose between being loved or being feared, then be feared. Right, let's check out this map. Oh wow. I mean, I must say, this game has looked beautiful from what I've seen. And I'm certainly not disappointed even now. Like, to me, it does even look like it has sort of a unique art style in just how the graphics look like. But as we zoom in a bit closer, let's have a look at our men. I mean, we're playing on high graphics, right? I I don't want to challenge my computer too much, especially since, well, I've not got a thousand pound computer or more. But I'm quite happy with this. The characters look good. They can see individual faces and that in good detail. Yeah, we'll make this work. Right, so let's switch around. Is there a way to pitch the screen? Apparently not. Um, can, oh wait, this is how we do it. Okay, I did look up the controls, so it looks like I have to hold the mouse button down. If we're going to pitch up and down. Okay. Very easy thing to fight. It looks like my hidden axes are only hidden, but as a vanguard. Okay, good to know. And they cause scare, apparently. Tear fire into its foes and reduce the morale of nearby enemies. And they actually have a ranged weapon. Okay. Guerrilla deployment. Snipe. Remains hidden and firing. Stalk. Huh. Then they're actually pretty good when it comes to shooting. Good to know. Right, cheap hole arms, axes. Okay, let's grab our two axe units. To be honest, I imagine we can win this pretty easily without even using our infantry. But we might as well just put them in, you know? So let's put you guys over here. I know these guys can va do vanguards, but we're just going to put them on the flank as well. Archers in the rear. Generals to the front. Now, I remember reading somewhere, I think, on Reddit that... A strategist can't be engaged in duels, which I hope isn't the case because it would be pretty cool to be able to see the dueling system straight away. So let's move you guys up. And are you guys moving towards me? Or yes, you are. Okay, let's have a look. Characters cannot duel. Damn, that's a shame. I would have really liked it if we could. Okay, no matter. We're going to have you charge in towards him. I mean, we are just facing our archers here. I mean, let's be honest. They're not going to be difficult to face. Threat is high for you, eh? Let's find out. Right, in the meantime, are these guys good forward? You're going to engage them. You engage them. 
You'll come over here and attack them. You'll come over here and attack him. Archers, you'll start firing as soon as you get the chance. You'll take a few hits, but that's okay. I'd rather prefer her take the hits than any of my units. But here we go. Whack! Okay, can we... What's this? Binding Fury, melee attack. Okay, looks like we could do some nice bit of damage with this. Two, one. Okay, we need to... Oh, right, we killed him. <laughs> okay, let's have you engage this unit here, Nen. You've gone into loose formation. You're now routing. Oh, wow, we won it. And we didn't lose a single person in that fight. Okay, well, I'm going to speed things up. We don't want the enemy to get away if we can just chase them down and kill them. So we'll let them just get on with it. Okay, shouldn't it be too long? Yeah, these guys need to be my dad as ready. And we ready to kill these ones? There we go, decisive victory. I mean, I would have been shocked if we actually lost, but... Yeah, we didn't lose a single unit. A single man, even. Wow. So she got 93 kills. He got 118. But to be fair, she was going after their general and he just went straight into the, the troops. Nice kill. My legend grows. Okay, we've got a bit of money now. Free infamy. Now what do we want? Replenishment, there's no need. Military supplies, well, now that we've completed our mission, we're actually going to get like 35 of them a turn. So we're not going to have to worry about food anytime soon. So let's just go and get that little bit of extra cash, shall we? There we go. Right, so yeah, we've got plus 30 military supplies now. It's good. Glorious victory. Victory! The vi survivors of this battle will run back to their Simpuin masters, and through feared whispers they shall all know my name before the end, giving us an extra 2,000 experience for her. Very nice indeed. So let's click that. Mission issued. Zheng Zhang begins her conquest. You have as much claim to lead as any of these spineless nobles, my lady, and now is the time to prove it. By capturing this nearby region, you can demonstrate both your martial prowess and your administrative potential. So we need to go after Taiyan, which is a town nearby, I presume, and get support from the people. Plus 5 public order, plus 25 faction support. So I'm going to have to double check what that one means. But how far is it? Oh, just here. We can actually get here, I think, this turn. Let's have a look. Move this around a bit so we can actually see a bit better. Discard mercy to achieve ambition. All right. Push forward. No mercy. There we go. Okay, superior forces, decisive victory. Let's uh, predict medium casualties. What do they have? Uh, rear line, bowmen, bowmen, and chi militia. You know what? We're just going to delegate this battle. Yeah! We'll fight the next one. But that should do okay for now. Lost 148. That's okay. Free infamy. Let's go for occupy. To abandon it would be rude. <laughs> it will be indeed. So there we go. We managed to succeed the mission. Establish an order. This city is just the beginning of my fury. I will become the name that the decadent Han fear to speak, lest I invoke my rage. So we now got an extra 2,000 experience for her too. And what's this now? To be a queen. Zheng Zhang must act like a queen. A good leader provides for their people, yes? Then you have an obligation to do the same. If the people love you, they will produce more for you, and your standing will rise. Have con construction start in your settlements and watch your power grow. So we now need to either construct or upgrade a building, and our reward is... Minus 20% construction costs, or min and minus 1 construction time. Okay. Let's have a look what we got for buildings here at the moment. So we got the town itself that we can upgrade if we want, or even downgrade, but why would we want to do that necessarily? We've got 121,000 people here. So from what I remember looking around in the game, yeah, we got not even half the capacity of the town itself, so I'm not too concerned about that. We've got a small garrison, a little bit of prestige, okay. So we could spend 2,000 to upgrade this, but in a way that's not really worthwhile. So we will leave that for now. We've got a Drifter Workforce Camp. 
extra population growth makes our learning and market buildings cheaper. To be honest, I think we could just disband this. Yeah, we need a small city to get this, so we can't even upgrade it for another two goes anyway. So I'm going to demolish this. And 100% income. We've expanded most of our money and get double the income. Hmm. Let's do that for now. Although something we... Actually, before we do that, let me just check, because if I remember right, we can go to assignments here. Appoint an assignee, so we can give our characters different jobs, right? So what do we have? We've got Ku Gong, Ying Li, and Lu Shen. Okay, Lu Shen was the one that was on the deployment screen beforehand. So let's have a look. We've got agricultural exploitation, so we can make extra food. And food production for assignments. Band of control is for minus 10 military supplies to enemies in the region. Ooh, supervised construction. Minus 10% construction costs, minus 1 construction time, 25% building upkeep. So it will take 5, it will last 5 turns and it looks like it will take 1 turn to do. Exploit the black market allows us to have 15 turns of plus 50 trade influence, okay. Band of patrol is the same. Extra 75% income from commerce, silk and spices. You know what, if we're going for building, I think going for this will be quite handy. And it looks like it takes one turn to happen. Yeah, preparing for assignment. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll actually leave this for a turn. And then next turn we'll see about doing the buildings. And we can even see what we can build here as well. Now, what else is there to do here? We've got... Bring me a report on my holdings. Of course. Can we... Recruit? Be able to recruit units next turn. Okay, that's fine. In the meantime, you're getting replenishments. Five turns into fully replenished. Four turns, one turn, four turns, five turns. Okay. Six turns until she's up to full strength too. Okay, that's fine. So what else is there on the map here? That's, I mean, I've seen some of the bars up here. So we know, for example, our faction summary. What's this? Yeah. So we can see about our stuff here. We're bandits at currently. We work up then to outlaw. So we need 76 additional prestige, and we've got 4 out of 80. That gives us more... Okay, so this is like basically the Imperium uh, mechanic. So the higher we go up, the more armies we can provide, the more money we can do, more trade agreements, and so on. And eventually it works all the way up to Empress. Once a faction leader has earned enough prestige to be named king, they will also claim the right to rule and proclaim themselves emperor, which makes their capital seats of great power. They can also become an emperor by capturing these seats at a demonstration of their influence. So we can we need to unite China by bringing all emperor seats under your control and by owning 95 provinces. Okay, this is going to be a long campaign. <laughs> Let's hope you guys look forward to it. Right, what else we got? Court. Okay, so this Lu Shen is actually our faction heir. Okay, that's good to know. And we've got our other characters just down here. Currently employed as an assignee. Place them in the posts, garrison general. Hmm. Okay, so we can actually put administration. There's no available commanderies for this character to administrate. Did we not just capture one? Huh. Okay. Zhenjiang. Oh yeah, we can actually marry you off if we wanted. Um, I'm not going to do that yet because we're going to save the money. But it's just handy to know that we can start our own family, I guess, as the bandit queen. Now, Diplomacy. So at the moment, we've got Don Zhou, the tyrant himself, the Han Empire, and looks like we're at war with them. And we've got Zhang Yang, the other bandit king. So the king of Black Mountain. Hang on, let's switch this around. There we go. Just because I know he's to the north and he was down to the southwest. Right. Trade partners, wars. Okay, so let's have a look. Now, an easy thing we can do, rather than negotiate with all these different ones, is we can actually just get a quick deal. And I remember reading this from the, the one of the videos. So we can look, right, do we want peace? Okay, this faction says no. Non-aggression. We could get non-aggression with the bandit uh, um, Zheng Yan. But when I think we're okay for the moment. I'll, we'll bother with him. Oh, no, I'll tell you what. I suppose we are going to be focusing on the Han Empire, and having that would come in handy. So, let's see, are you willing to negotiate? Negotiate a non-aggression deal. 
Let's Were you willing to make this work? You want me to pay you one fa- Nope, we're not doing that. <laughs> okay, military access not needed right now. Trade agreements, that would be useful. Only you. How much are you going to charge me for this this time? Negotiate deal. Welcome. Let us talk. 242. Okay. And how much is the trade deal we're making? 301. Okay, we'll make that money back in like one turn. Sure. We sign, let's deal, sign the deal. Close diplomacy. And just like that, we have now doubled our income. Your general's bonds will Thank you. Okay, what else we got? We got our reforms. So this is our tech tree, basically. But instead of like, okay, it's going to take like five turns to do this and what have you. We can then get them into the next reformers in three turns. It looks like we already got regional overseers. It looks like we've got it. I don't know. We'll find out. Three turns anyway to go. Right, what we got here? Characters. What's wrong with you? Low general satisfaction. Okay. Let's have a look. So there's a thing. Satisfaction is this thing here. And basically, you need to make sure they keep happy. If they don't, they will defect to other uh, factions. And people that they feel would appreciate them more. Which is a problem if he's currently one of my commanders. So what can we give you to try and improve your abilities? Let's see. Um, what you got at the moment? Ajan, 220, 163, 30... We thought, you know what? If one is good, two is always better. And it does, re okay, it reduces his expertise, but we'll sort it out. So we've got different stats as well, as you can see here. So this one, for example, means that if he's um, basically the governor, makes the units cheaper, increases health or population growth, ammunition, army, military supplies, all nice little bonuses we can do. So we'll give you that. What do we have for here? Um, which one are you equipped with at the moment? Oh, this one, okay. 30 armor base. Okay, provides a bit more armor and a charge bonus, but everything else looks crap. That's less armor, but it gives me the plus 3 expertise. Um, still... You know what? Sure, let's give you expert's lever. He's, it looks like he's a sentinel. He's supposed to be taking all the hits for me, so we'll let that happen. What we got here? Uh, ex income from industry. Okay, so these neither of these are going to be any use for him right now. Um, plus loyalty. Let's give you this for the satisfaction, I guess, for the moment. Okay, Lushu. I would like to try and get her into the army instead. But we can't do anything anyway until next turn. So let's just end the turn. And see what happens next. Now I know we haven't got much done in today's episode, I'll be honest, I'm, you know, I'm exploring, I'm finding out how the game works for myself rather than having to, you know, fiddle around the place and be like, huh, how do I do this? Okay, well we'll fit one more turn at the very least. So, let's check out the town first of all. What we're going to give. So we can upgrade this now and it's actually fairly cheap now. We've got a nice bit of money for it too. Or we can go for this. So what we've got, we've got... Tax collection, minus four public order, 80 income. Yes, yeah, not that useful. Increased tributes and diplomacy, again, don't need. Experience ranks for low recruits. I think that could be quite handy having an in. It gives 100 income for commerce, extra 10% as well, so that's going to be 110. And makes agriculture buildings cheaper. That doesn't give me much money, but it does give me growth and farming, drift to farming camp. Increased income from peasantry, but... Income reduction by banditry, but increases replenishment. Yeah, let's go for an inn for the moment here. And it looks like it'll be done in one turn as well. Should we upgrade... Oh, we can only do one building at a time. Thank you for telling me, game. So, next turn we'll finish the mission at the very least. But it looks like we've got two more regions, I guess you can say, we can go for. We can go over for the Iron Mine or the Toolmaker as part of this province. And uh, let's have a look. Toolmaker is back the way we came. Is that right? Yeah, we switch this around so that's north. Yeah. So back the way we came, we can get the Toolmaker or we can go over here for the Iron Mine. 
Zen here, Commander E, we don't own a camp. Okay, so they've got, they've got a fishing port and this place is deserted. 8,000 if we want to try and we colonize it. Okay. Well, I'm thinking going down here will be a good target for us to go for next. But let's try and build up the army a little bit better first of all. So let's go to recruits. Now, to be honest, I don't really want him. So is it possible to swap him what out? What do you wish, my lord? A bit counter points in general. Okay, so that actually determines the commander of the actual army. Okay. Stance, normal. Okay, this must be it. Huh. So we can put this in, and apparently these two will get along quite nicely. Sentinel Yang Xing has two, acts, two units of him already. This one gets along with Shen Zheng. He'll get along with both of them, and he's also a champion. Or we can go for the saboteur here, Yin Li. You know what, let's have this bloke. I think it's more expensive because he... Uh, oh no, he's not actually part of our retinue yet. Okay, he's not part of the army, I mean. Let's give you... Let's get Lu Shen in here instead. Confirm. There is cunning in caution. Okay, so we now got a strategist under our command as well, and our faction heir as well. So we got quite a bit of extra replenishment we need to do. Okay. I answer, my lord. Let's get your details. What can we give you? God, that's okay. We can't give you that, but this one. I might as well just keep that. I think that's much better. That's much better as well. Horseman. Uh, neither of these are going to be much use for you. And we've only got this one. But you're actually quite happy with us at the moment. So I'll leave that. As it is. But what units are we going to basically get? Can we give... Can we swap these over to another un commander? Disband units. Swap units. Okay, let's swap out this unit. What we got? Saber Cav. How about Deer Cav. Spearman. Let's give you another unit of axes. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's a lot of money. Okay, didn't realize that. You know what, cancel... Okay, we've got it. Oh, no, we haven't canceled it. Yes, we have. Good. Okay, we can actually get a trebuchet if we want it. Um, oh, wait, they get... Oh, yeah, they get different units, don't they? So, Lu Shen, for example, can get another unit of archers, or we can get some crossbowmen. Let's get you a unit of crossbowmen, I think. And then, f for you, and for you, yeah, we'll swap this out. Let's go for a unit of spear guards. There we go. And we'll start having you guys march down south towards the toolmaker. Without mercy! Uh, Keep moving! Damn it. Right. I didn't want to go too far because I can see that she hasn't got any of her characters leveled up yet. And now we just march into enemy territory. Bugger. No matter. We'll just... We'll fight it as we do. Okay. You've leveled up as well. Let's have a look what we can do with you. So one point. Um, looks like we've done these ones. Okay. So what we can do. We can either go for... Yeah, Wisdom, plus a Cunning. Locks Assignment, Reward the Filet and Incorrupt, and plus 15 Reserves. Or we can go for Guile, which increases our chances of ambushing, and give us a deployment for our own retinue. So we can do a Vanguard and Infiltrate. I think that's a better one to go for. We'll apply. And just double check, what can we give you? Your own weapons, your own armor, Van Horse. There's nothing really I want to swap out. Let's just do that for now. Right, I think there's everything we need to worry about. We've still got a nice bit of money. We'll have a little bit more coming in next turn. And I do appreciate the fact that the end turns are quite quickly compared to what I'm used to with Warhammer too. Obviously not a lot of Warlords to worry about this time around. Right. Okay. We've now finished this. That's going to make things even cheaper for us as well. That's good. 
so the Banner Queen draws more warriors to her cause. You are well versed in war, my lady, and China is on the brink of total chaos. Only strength on the battlefield will decide a victor and it must be you. Increase recruitment to your armies, then ride into battle and destroy all opposition. So we need to have a maximum of 10 units at the start of a new turn. We've got 8 at the moment. Okay, so our commanders actually count as well. That's good to know. We get grown might, extra replenishment and experience for 3 turns. Okay, what we'll do... Instead of going after Tan Yan straight away, I'm going to pull back for, into here. Um, is that going to actually give me much... It's going to take ages to replenish, isn't it? Huh. Okay, let's give a couple more units since we're here. Sabre Militia, good for Sultan, Missile Defense. Um, what is your... your hang on, you're a champion, remind me. We have to use a spear infantry and glaive infantry. Your and as a welcome, strategist, the retinues of ranged infantry. Okay. So for you, let's give... We're not going to go for a trebuchet. That's a bit too extreme right now. Let's go for another unit of these. And for you, let's give you some spear guards. There we go. That should work. So, can we do anything else now for stances? Can we make it so we can get a bit more replenishment? Recruitment and replenishment enabled in our own territory. Oh no, we've already done all these anyway. Will this increase in a little bit faster? Ready the encampment. I don't know, it doesn't look like it. No, it's still eight. eight. Okay, never mind. Let's just uh, normal stance now. Okay, we'll just leave that. Okay, can we upgrade this? In a couple of turns we can. We now need to do... In fact, have we not finished this now? Oh, start of a new turn, okay. Let's start, finish off this turn. Then what I'm thinking is, next episode we'll start the fight against the Toolmaker, go up and get the Iron Mine and basically conquer the commandery here of Tai Yuan. Once we've dealt with that, we'll see which direction we're going to expand to next. Oh, we've done this now, cool. What we got here? China lies vulnerable. Zhang Jiang will exploit this. As the can crumbles, some homes, but too few to be called a city. Fair enough. As the hand crumbles, more and more of their territory lies vulnerable, and you must not let the opportunity for power slip through your fingers. Zhang Jiang, the entire commandery is within your grasp. Simply reach out and take it. So we hold three settlements we need to do, and our infamy will grow. So what we're going to do next time then is go after the Iron Mine and Toolmaker, capture them and complete the objective. But for now, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Free Kingdoms, and I hope you join me next week for more Free Kingdom gameplay. But until then, take care, and goodbye for now.